And welcome into Pro Football Today, the big game edition here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined by Michael Carver, and we've got football on our mind. And uh, so do your favorite hosts from across the network here as they are stationed live in Las Vegas all week long, getting us the inside scoop on what is going to be a pretty big game coming up on Sunday. And we'll kick things off. With our good friend Ben Stevens, host of the early line, he had a chance to sit down and talk with Fox Sports NFL reporter Carmen Vitale. And here's what they had to say about the big game. Ben Stevens and Carmen Vitale getting ready for the big game on Sunday. NFL reporter for Fox Sports. Carmen, great to be back with you. We were here, not here, but in in Phoenix for Super Bowl 57. Now we get to do it. I think if you do it two years in a row... That's an annual tradition as we get ready for Super Bowl Yeah, that establishes an – you're right. That establishes a tradition more than once. Yeah, I think I it's a it. huge thing for us. Maybe <laughs> Super Bowl 59, which I believe is in New Orleans. I think I saw a booth walking around Radio Row. So <laughs> let's get ready for Super Bowl 58. It's the Niners and the Chiefs. San Francisco, a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Total for the game is at 47-and-a-half. We start with San Francisco, who Carmen was booked as a favorite to win Super Bowl 58 mm-hmm. pretty much from the opening month of this NFL season. Expected to be here. They've been favored in every game what do you make of the path for san francisco to get here to las vegas well it's been a kind of a tale of two seasons everybody says the postseason is a new season right and that's been the case for the 49ers who were so dominant in the regular season and then they get to the playoffs and they get down and they're kind of scraping by and they're barely winning against the green bay packers who no one gave a shot and then that 17 point halftime deficit that they had against the detroit lions Everyone pretty much thought that game was over. Yeah. Granted, I, I will give the, the, the crowd in Santa Clara a lot of credit. They all stayed. And Kyle Shanahan made it worth their while. So they haven't looked as dominant in yeah. the postseason. But who knows when, when it comes to the Super Bowl. It's, it's anybody's game now that they've had two weeks to prepare. The number one seed in the NFC, a 12-5 and five regular season record. All 12 of the wins by at least a touchdown. It's been a little bit shakier in the postseason, to say the least. Kansas City has the pedigree. It's Andy Reid. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's Travis Kelsey. Fourth Super Bowl appearance in the last five years. But this year in 2023 was a little bit different. How would you compare this KC team to the teams of the past, like when we were doing this last year in Phoenix? I mean, it's the exact opposite story of the 49ers that we were just talking about. The Kansas City Chiefs did not look unbeatable this season, but then they go into the postseason and they pretty much control and dominate every single game. And it's a testament to Andy Reid. It's a testament to Patrick Mahomes. It's a testament to the way that they work together and how they can improvise and evolve because this is, again, not the Kansas City Chiefs team we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. They have the most drops in the league this year by their receivers. Travis Kelsey at times hasn't looked either healthy or as dominant as he has been, but that has all changed in the postseason where it's looking looks like the Chiefs team that we're used to seeing. Yeah. And even though they're doing it with receivers that you probably wouldn't have heard the names of yeah. coming into this season, although I will say Rasheed Rice – has he's he's really he's he's come a long way yeah. since the beginning of the season. A rookie wideout who has emerged for this Kansas City team, but Rasheed Rice, Isaiah Pacheco, and Travis Kelsey right. of the seven postseason touchdowns Kansas City has scored, they've had all seven. And again, only seven postseason touchdowns in three games. But there is still a sentiment getting ready for Super Bowl Sunday, certainly around Las Vegas. If Patrick Mahomes is the underdog, where he has been booked as a dog twelve times in his National Football League career over over the last six seasons that you can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. Do you continue to believe with that idea, Carmen, getting ready for Sunday? I'm so torn because, honestly, I had that attitude all the way up until this game where as much as I wanted to see the Ravens in the Super Bowl because I think that would have been great for Baltimore, great for Lamar, all of that kind of stuff, history has taught me to never bet against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes in the postseason. So why am I going to start doing that now, despite the fact that the 49ers have an incredible, incredibly potent offense? You think that Kyle Shanahan has learned kind of a thing or two about how to play the Chiefs, although it's going to be a a different animal with Steve Spagnuolo as defensive coordinator. It all comes down to the fact, though, that like I can't switch up. Like, I can't switch up at this point. Mm -mm. I'm going to go with the Chiefs just because of the fact that you can't bet against these guys. This is they they tap into something completely different. And if you watched opening night last night, there was a little bit of nervous energy by the 49ers. Right. And the Chiefs were like, oh, this is business as usual, man. Like, we're we're doing this again this year. Talk about an annual tradition. Yeah. 
That, truly, Kansas City knows exactly where they're going to be come the second weekend of February. That postseason pedigree is there. One thing I also noticed from opening night at Super Bowl 58 and this week, was a lot of boos, a lot of San Francisco 49er faithful in the yeah. crowd. And I think Mahomes, although he mentioned last night or on that opening night of Super Bowl week that he never feels like an underdog, he gets the idea that maybe they are the underdog or the hated side because they have been here so often. So it sounded like Carmen Vitale's official Super Bowl prediction was the Kansas City Chiefs back to back Lombardi trophies. Can we get an official score? Oh God, I hate score predictions. Okay. Um, you don't have to do it then. I well, it's it's I could see it go both ways. That's the thing. I could see this being a defensive battle, yeah. despite all odds and how potent these offenses can be. But I could also see a shootout. So I'm hovering in the 20s. There's gonna it's gonna be like 28 to 24, something mm. like that. I think so. When you look right. at that total, 47 and a half. Yeah. It's going to be so intriguing. If the game trends over, I actually lean San Francisco. Mm-hmm. If the game goes under. I actually lead the Chiefs, which leads me to my next question about this Super Bowl matchup. If it is Kansas City, what is the key matchup that will result in a Chiefs championship? I'm a big trench girl, so I Who's always not? look at the lines. Yeah. And listen, I was part of the Buccaneers team that won against the Kansas City Chiefs Oop. in 2020, and they did that because, the, in part, they had a lot to do with it, but in yeah. part, Kansas City's offensive line was hurt, yeah. and they were able to get pressure with four and get really creative with their blitz packages and everything like that when they did deploy them. And I think that that's going to be such a key for the San Francisco defense in that you have to play physical. You, we, I watched the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line force – uh, Roquan Smith into the catastrophic mistake at the end of the game yeah. in in Baltimore. That was absolutely like on purpose. These, yeah. This is a physical offensive line. The 49ers are going to have to come out and they're going to have to use every bit of physicality they have on that defensive line with Nick Bosa, with Eric Armstead, with Javon, with uh, Javon Hargrave. Yeah. God, I'm getting every, all these guys mixed up because they have so many. They have so many. They have so many. So I'm looking towards the trenches and I'm looking on the other side of that too between the San Francisco offensive line and this Chiefs defensive line. A lot of blitz packages for Brock Purdy to deal with <laughs> in his first ever Super Bowl appearance. So I'm not going to say that the overall thought process was wrong. But let's say the outcome and your prediction is wrong on Super Bowl Sunday and the 49ers win a Lombardi trophy in Las Vegas. What will be the main reason San Francisco gets it done? I have to think it has to do with Christian McCaffrey. Carmen Vitale getting us set for Super Bowl 58 and even beyond into 2024 with the NFL draft, covering the NFL for Fox Sports. Carmen, thank you so much. I'll see you next year, I guess, in New Orleans. Uh, Yeah, we have to keep this tradition up, right? That would be three years in a row. (laughs) be a disappointment if the Chargers aren't in the playoffs this year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the goal, right? Yeah. Make the playoffs yeah. this year. Yeah, the, the, goal, the goal is to win a division because the best team in the league is in your division. So, the mentality of it, yeah. forget the playoffs, forget the Super Bowl. Division. Let's win a division because we get a division. It's and like we, college, right? Win exactly. the conference. That's it. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. 
the New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. To the big news here. Uh, a big push for, for Georgia to get things going as far as legalized sports betting. And, and Pat, I don't want to get people too excited. It's not like this is happening this year. The Senate version and the House version, and then they're going to have to get a couple of people from each chamber together and kind of wrestle out the details of what exactly sports betting in Georgia might look like. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. But don't break. You've got to give Spags credit for that. Sure, and that's the, the. I mean, for all the criticism that's been levied at KC this season, and there's been a lot. Their defense has been a dominant unit. It's been a playoff winning unit. And you know, you ask me what's the undervalued commodity here? In it, it's it's KC's defense. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. In pro football today here, the big game edition on the Sports Grid Network. Jaron Ari alongside Mike Carver. And Mike, I don't know about you, man. I am getting ready to pull uh, pull the trigger here on a whole lot of bets uh, for this weekend. Are you heavily invested yet in this game coming uh, up on Sunday? I'm getting there, Joe. Uh, I'm getting mm. there. As the week goes on, it's like you add a couple here, you add a couple there. Well, you know, Tuesday, here's three more. Wednesday, here's another four. Here you go. And, oh, and by the time you get to Sunday, uh, the card's pretty full. Uh, and one thing that I'm actually uh, starting to add as well, Joe, kicking props. That's right. Mm. Uh, over 47 and a half, the longest kick. Over one and a half field goals for each of the kickers uh, for Butker uh, or for Moody. Probably go under uh, for Moody, Joe, if I was thinking about that right now. But how about we get some kicking insight? From out in Vegas, that's right, Ben Stevens and Kevin Walsh talking to former NFL kicker, former Niners kicker, Robbie Gould. It's 18-year NFL pro Robbie Gould, one of the 10 best field goal kicking percentages in the history of the National Football League. Robbie, we are very glad to have you here. What's your assessment of Radio Row, the Mandalay Bay Convention Center here in Las Vegas? Uh, it's been awesome. I've been through security about 15 times. It's too much. Too much. Um, it's too much. The layout's been pretty incredible. I mean, listen, you guys are in basically suit and ties for this. I, I mean... I don't know how many suit and tie interviews I'm doing on Media Row, so <laughs> makes us legit. A, you know make it a little bit more if, proper. If you we know? had sponsored polos, we'd be doing the same I mean, thing. I can get—I know people. I can get you this okay, if you want. Thank you so I'd much. rather the pizza than the polo, <laughs> but I, I can I, settle. I agree. A Look, cheese, I have cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza, plain regular, yeah. but cheese. You can call it cheese if you want. It's a big. I'm big. from New York. It's a big debate. We'll let it go. Okay. Topic All right, debate. I, so I have this question because. Someone told me a long time ago that being a kicker or a punter is very bizarre because basically your whole life you know more than all your coaches. And I only <laughs> played high school football, but I was like, oh, that sounds right at minimum to where I got to. I don't even – is that true or is that nonsense? I wouldn't say that I know more than the coaches, but the longer you play in it, the more you hear, the more you learn, and it's helpful. Um, you know, we are in a world of our own where but, we're yeah. socialites. That's what we are, you know. <laughs> Okay. As Trent Dilfer calls us, we're online shoppers. Yeah. You okay. know? Uh, but it is fun to be able to – the best part about being in a, a position like that is you get to converse with everybody. So you get to know all your teammates and mm -hmm. uh, coaches, and you're not in just one meeting for your position or offense or defense. It is Super Bowl week. Two Super Bowl appearances of your own. Super Bowl 41 with the Bears. Super Bowl 54 with the 49ers. What is your favorite Super Bowl week memory? You know, I think uh, Super Bowl 54 was – Really, really unique for me because I, I had my kids and they were really little so uh i remember getting up super bowl morning and always super bowl that sunday is just the clock never moves yeah you could sit in your room turn over it's five minutes yeah. six minutes 
Uh, so I went to my my room with, to see my wife and kids and played catch with them and, and hung out. So uh, that to me was a lot of fun. And then, um, you know, just being able to spend that time. Listen, this thing's a, this has turned into the, such a show, right? Yeah, they yeah. call it the big game. It's a show. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, but I remember I, I would always go out to the field and when I got to the stadium, I walked out in my street clothes, but I had my credentials on, and security came swarming me at the 50-yard <laughs> line. And this just happened with – I was with Tom Rinaldi walking out and yeah. against the Rams in the NFC Championship, and they're like, you, sir, I'm in dressed in San Francisco 49ers sweats. They're yeah, like, sir, yeah. you can't be out of here. I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? I'm should've, taking today. should have yeah. dressed up like us. should have brought the suit. They'd have been like, this guy means business. Yeah. Yeah. This is the part of – so I guess there's more waiting around for you maybe than every other position, depending on how the game goes. But the halftime feels crazy to me because, like, sometimes we'll do a live show or whatever, and we're like, when is the game going to start yeah. up? For you guys, obviously, routine is such a big part of what you do. Does that feel as long or as yeah. usual or way longer? Well, here's what I'll tell you we did. For the halftime show – uh, not this week, but the previous week, as you're leading up, it's all your prep. Yeah. So what what I tried to do is I tried to simulate early in the week what the game might feel like. So if okay. we were at practice, I would warm up pregame. I'd kick in the middle like the period. Then I'd wait like 30 minutes and then go do it again. So that was like my halftime routine based on the schedule they give you. Uh, I would say that uh, it doesn't really matter – they could give you an hour and a half, and it still feels like a full day. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. One of the coolest things I did my first Super Bowl is I went out early, and it was raining, so it was, it was Prince singing Purple Rain. And I was waiting just for, like, I didn't want to sit in the locker room because it's just, if, if you have the home locker room, it's bigger. If you have the away locker room, the visitor locker it's really tiny, uh-huh. and you have all the people, the staff, and it's just chaos. And I think, like, the big thing for me is I always wanted to stay in, like, the moment. And I just know that the last thing I want to do is sit in my locker like this, just waiting for these guys. <laughs> when are we going to go? When are we going to go? So those are kind of the memories that I have from Super Bowl weeks. When Speaking I played of it. your routine, last year with San Francisco, during the 2022 NFL playoffs, a warm-up routine of yours went viral <laughs> as you were kicking through the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders inside AT&T Stadium. What does it take for Robbie Gold to be perfectly game prepared? Well, here's what I'll tell you. When we came out... <laughs> I usually come out and I'll say, hey, where is everybody at? Yeah. Uh, the cheerleaders were at the 50-yard line. Um, I was like, I'll be fine down here at the 20, 25. There'll be no-. And then I say, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, I didn't have any idea. But I was like, all right, whatever. I'll kick. It's not a problem. And then I get done and I get to my phone and everyone's like, dude, it was on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, it's, uh, you know, somebody made a big deal about the Green Bay th- one. The only one I did on purpose was the Rams. I was kicking at halftime. They came out for the kickoff and uh, they wouldn't move. I was like, hey, guys, just give me one more. I'll get out of your way. Like, yeah, whatever. I was like, all right. So I tried to skim it off the guy's head. <laughs> I like that. I was like, I'm not, forget this. Like, you guys, it's not that big of a deal. It's one more kick. But that's just how those moments work. You I know? thought you were going to tell me that when you saw the Cowboys cheerleaders at the midfield logo, you were going to be like, all right, 66, 67 yards, show I off got the this. leg. I got this. Impress the people <laughs> yeah. out there. That would be good. Yeah. I, I would like, now, the more impressive thing is kicking in Big Ten football, though, right? Because the Big Ten scoring's hard to come by. Yep. I mean, that's hey, my read on it. Ground and pound, baby. You know, big run game. I just – here's the deal. Be I'm, nice, Kevin. I'm outnumbered. I'm, I'm outnumbered. Okay, what, what conference do you cheer for? I mean, so honestly, independent. Shout out ND. Uh, okay. I don't even count. Well, that's I why count. you don't count the Big Ten. Yeah. No, I just – I'm excited. All right, so here's how I'll set it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited for the realignment. I know a lot of the purists are a little frustrated because it's ruining everything. I cannot wait to see what happens when the pass-happy Pac-12 – walks into Big Ten country, and maybe Iowa is going to shut all these teams out 7 nothing, or maybe it's 49-3, to and somebody should have said, okay, we should start throwing the football. It's 2024. Well, here's what I will tell you. Yeah. Teams like Michigan, Ohio State, which Ohio State still runs a spread offense. Yeah. You know, I think the teams that run the football will be able to manage the game better because those teams on the – pass happy let's score every drive don't get the ball as much so they get out of rhythm and i think what'll be cool for me with them coming in as a big 10 or myself going to penn state is the big 10 now 
will have TV and eyeballs for Heisman trophies, for uh, other awards, coast to coast. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's phenomenal for that. But you're also bringing in really good programs, whereas the Pac-12 wasn't a great football division of any a conference of any sort after everyone starts leaving. So yeah. um, I think it made the Big Ten better, uh, frankly. Agree. Uh, but I do think that it'll be great for people to be able to watch two different styles of football, which is essentially the NFL anyways. Yes. I heard you in one of the scores you gave out, 49-3. to three. That's a field goal on the other side. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing right there. There's nothing wrong with no. that. So we're at the FanDuel set yep. each and every morning. One of our good friends is the associate producer for the show after us up in Adams, which you were yeah. on earlier in this week. Mm -hmm. You were there playing some beer pong. As of right now, you are on top of the leaderboard of Beer Pong at Up and Adams. Uh, I'm still there, I hope. Yes. I, 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 but I think no one else interviewed yet. Well, in person. Robbie, we didn't <laughs> review <laughs> Top is top. what we have right now. But yes, so I'm the leader. of this moment, I'm a leader. leader in the clubhouse, champion of Beer yeah. Pong, what other hidden talents does Robbie Gold have? Uh, I love the golf. Uh, big golfer. Mm -hmm. uh, I golfed uh, yesterday in the pouring down rain here in Las Vegas, which, by the way, uh, it's two days in a row. Not real happy about it. One final question before okay. we let you go. Here we are, Super Bowl 58 mm -hmm. week. Harrison Butker on one side, Jake Moody on the other. What is your advice for these kickers on this biggest stage? Butker has been there. Moody is a rookie. Do the nerves amplify for a Super Bowl? Well, I think Harrison won't have as much as Jake will as a rookie. Um, but I will tell you this, you know, being a part out here this week with the Giornos and they're This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are two and four when they trail by more than seven points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcon Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of kind of the two Super Bowls, one is the coordinator, one is the head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. <laughs> that if and I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. E exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The DiGiorno's doink Ooh. free pizza. Uh -oh. I'm hoping for a doink that goes in. So if anybody wants to Ooh. obviously get a part of the uh, 
the DiGiorno's doink.com to win some free pizza. Let's let's hope for a doink that goes in. I am actually very surprised. They convinced a proud kicker to be a part of a DiGiorno's doink. Uh, only because it could go in. Because it could go in. There also, go. I'm a Chicago guy, so doink's a bad word in the uh, Chicago so, so. city. <laughs> we'll cut that part for the <laughs> <laughs> Better watch watching. Ben Stevens, Kevin Walsh, yeah. and, of course, Robbie Gold. Robbie, we appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Welcome back in pro football today here. Uh, the big game edition on the Sports Grid Network. Now, uh, those of you that have followed the network here, then you no doubt understand how much fun it is when Gabe Renzi gets to show up in Las Vegas. It was also pretty fun when he got to sit down with former NFL player Sean Merriman to talk about this game coming up on Sunday. Here's what they had to say. We are kicking it live on Media Row, Las Vegas, Nevada, but you already know that, and I think you already recognize the man is sitting next to me, uh, former NFL badass, uh, now, of course, lights out extreme fighting. He's a regular on Sports Rage, but I always love kicking it live, face-to-face with my main man, Sean Merriman. What's hey, up, man? How you always doing, good, man? bro. Good to see you. Always good, and your stomping grounds. Well, L.A., Las Vegas, San Diego, yeah. hey, they're all your stomping grounds, bro, but good to see you, my man. Yeah, good to see you, too. So, listen, you've got Lights Out 14 uh, coming up. It's I can't believe it. I guess you and I are getting old, and time flies by because I remember talking to you like Lights Out 1, yeah. Lights Out 5. I was yeah. like, man, congratulations on Lights Out 10. Dude, we're already at 14. Yeah, you know, it's kind of crazy. So, we, we got a big fight uh, next week, uh, Friday, in Long Beach, California. Lights Out Extreme Fight 14. Um, this is our biggest fight that we've had so far because we got two or three guys in this card. I believe they'll probably head off to the UFC and get that opportunity there. Uh, we'll be live on Fubo, Fubo TV, Fubo Sports. And also, we're introducing these Lights Out Tech gloves where it measures speed, power, punch, impact, G-force. So we're going to find a way to just try to get some of this data displayed. When guys get hit in the cage, you can measure the, 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 the power and the speed of, of that punch coming, where it's landing at. Uh, we got cameras that's, that's kind of capture, capturing the motion uh, of the fight below us. And so it's, it's going to be really cool, re- really interactive, and uh, I can't wait to int- introduce this to the fans. So you've always taken the production of this very seriously. Yeah. How did this come to be where you're sort of revolutionizing things? I mean, we've always said, how come there's not a chip in a football? Yeah. You've beaten the National Football League, essentially, <laughs> with this technology. But So you're going to be able to measure how strong punches are, all mm-hmm. kinds of different metrics. How did this come to be, and like, how how did you welcome this to your company? Say, you know what, this is what I want. Are you an analytic computer guy like uh, yourself? How did this come to be? Yeah, I've always uh, always been that way, and I, I looked at this as being like more of an incubator, right? And having these verticals of, of fan engagement technology, being able to have something like this, where where now the the broadcasters and the commentators going to be able to talk about like interactive viewing, displays I mean, real time stats yes. for an enhanced viewing experience. Comparative analysis provides historical comparisons to add context. So you're just going to have sort of instant stats, you know, boom, boom, as soon as it happens. Yeah, and and this is, you know, one day when we get the data accurate, this will be – uh, great for the betting companies. Bet, they, you know, I've, I got some betting companies. Just they, they saw this on the back end. They loved it. They want to check it out. Healthcare companies, you know, more healthcare companies trying to get this data to maybe start to ensure some of these fighters down the road if they can collect enough of this accurate data. So that's that's this whole thing is about, man. How we, did you beat some of the bigger companies to this action? Because this is something that you figure that some of the bigger companies would be thinking about. Yeah, I, I can maneuver a little different. <laughs> <laughs> you're you know, like a linebacker. Yeah, you say, you're you're that's right, you're man. That'd be a look, the line, man. You know, ha- have, having uh, the ability and, and the knowledge and, and then also, to the outreach, right, because I'm not a full-on tech guy, but I know what I want to do, and I get to, get to a hold of the right people to do it. And so had this great partnership with these guys over at Shot Tracker, um, you know, who created the, the technology. Actually, the technology is in, I think, PGA and, and MLB and, and – uh, it's one other, one, other, one other sport that they use that. But we have it in combat sports, and we're going to make this uh, data as accurate as possible. 
So a lot of your cards are uh, often on Saturdays. This is a Friday card. Yeah. So you're shaking it up a little bit. Why Friday this time? Well, because UFC is in Anaheim on Saturday. Okay. Uh, which is yeah. right next door. Yeah. So right to Long right beach. next to the beach. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think that's that's great, right? Because we got some you know some of the foot traffic. Obviously, they got a big card coming up. For in the Anaheim. record, too, Orange County UFC cards. Those are the, like the craziest ones, man. Right. <laughs> That's like the old school Ed Hardy crowd, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot it, of it's, big dudes and stuff. I, look, I'll, I'll <laughs> be there. I'll, I'll be there to fight. Um, and so, you know, the UFC's the next day, and we got a lot of um, a lot of fans coming in for the fight that's also going to come and see us. Right? That's we got, awesome, yeah. Um, you know, Tony Ferguson's guy is, uh, is on his card, Tommy Aaron. Uh, Album Morales, who fought in the UFC before, is trying to get back to the UFC. He's fighting this card. Uh, we I, I just got word of Cain Velasquez, Velasquez is probably going to show up there. We got a couple of his, his fighters awesome. on the card as well, man. So I think that's uh that's cool for everybody to be in town at the same time. And you have a very good relationship with the UFC and Dana White, don't yeah. you, personally? Yeah. Yeah, I got a, a pretty good relationship with them. And it, my, my first UFC fight was back in 2005, man. I, that's how long I've been around it with Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz and Randy Couture and these guys. So I've been around this sport, training, tr- often training with them during the off-seasons, man. So I've been around for a long time. And obviously having uh, you know, a pretty good relationship with Dana Works. All right, I want to talk some football with the great Sean Merriman as well. But let me ask you, we spoke to Sheena Bathory power slap yeah she's kind of the face of power slap there you know she's sort of billing her as like the ronda rousey yeah. type of deal she kind of looks like ronda as well she's got she kind of looks like a superstar and i you know we hear about taylor swift all the time sheena bathory has got like 200 million hits bro yeah on instagram what do you think about power slap as someone because when i tweeted out i said man i got the frank lemisella the president on i got sheena bathory on it was like 50 50 that stuff savage you know, I can't believe you're having these people on. And other people are like, man, I love this stuff. I'm betting on it. You as someone that's played football and now a combat sport owner and president of a company, what's your take on, on the power slap? I, I love it. Um, you know, and Dana talked about this, and I talked to him a little bit when I, was, when I saw him, is that you can say whatever you want. The numbers show that people are watching it, right? You, that video you're talking about, Dana showed me that the, that video got 170 million views. All right, so let's talk about Harbaugh. How excited are you? What do you think he brings? Does his does the does it translate what he did at Michigan to the National Football League? You know, he really preached that family and faith. And in fact, he had like seventy guys that were baptized. It was almost like they were like Liberty or something over there. They talked about playing for a higher cause. If you were playing as coach Harbaugh type of guy that you'd want to run through a wall for. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that his biggest quality in my opinion, is to be able to come in and make changes right away. Because it is, it is hard to walk into an NFL locker room. Now, he did it with San Francisco 49ers, by the way, with a less talented roster. He didn't have a Justin Herbert. He didn't have a Keenan Allen. Yeah. Right? He didn't have a Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, or Derwin James. He didn't have none of that. And he made those changes relatively quickly. So outside of talking about it, and I get the, the fans are super hyped up, excited, which they should be. It's going to be a fun year. But let's not talk about Super Bowl. Let's talk about which Jim Harbaugh did. Is how are we gonna get in this weight room today? How are we gonna have the building blocks? See that that's where a lot of people. Uh, and this, get, I'm a Michigan fan, and yeah. I'm really upset we lost Ben Herbert because this guy, the strength and conditioning coach yes. and the staff, he brought Minter with him. So let me ask you about this because I've told people I'm a big Harbaugh fan, being a Michigan fan that I am. He signed a five-year deal. Harbaugh is not coming in here to win the Super Bowl in year one per se. How do you build this team up? Let me ask you, what would you do with the, the fifth pick on the draft? Do you go with Brock Bowers, who's just a stud tight end, that you pair with Justin Herbert? Or, like Harbaugh likes to build the lines, man. Joe Walt out of Notre Dame. Maybe yes. a defensive lay two out of UCLA, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I am, look, nothing against Bowers. I think he's a great, um, uh, a great tight end. It's nothing wrong with Everett. Everett can go. Yeah. He can play. So if, if you're not if you're gonna draft a position, it gotta be an instant upgrade, not waiting for a guy to get on the field and trying to, you know, build him up and get him going. Would it be and we'll get to the Super Bowl and get Sean's Super Bowl thoughts before we get Sean out of here. Would it be a disappointment if the Chargers aren't in the playoffs this year? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the goal, right? Yeah. Make the playoffs yeah. this year. In yeah, your the, the goal the goal is to win a division because the best team in the league is in your division. So the mentality of it, yeah. forget the playoffs, forget the Super Bowl. Division. Let's win a division because we get a division. It's now. like college, right? Win yeah, exactly. the conference. That's it. Win the conference and then talk about everything else. All right, so as far as the Super Bowl is concerned, we've got a great matchup. It's a rematch from four years ago. 
We've got, you know, everybody talks about you just can't get in front of Mahomes here, but I think San Francisco have the deeper football team. How do you break this game down? What are the keys to the game, and who do you like? The Ravens were a better team than KC. So were the Bills. Better team. More talent. More All talent. these teams have more talent, right? More talent. They keep finding a way. More, more talent. You know, at, 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 How good is Spagnuolo uh, and his defensive that, coordinator, he, man? He, th- th- that defense, in my opinion, it, Patrick Mahomes is great. That defense is the reason why they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah. That play that they made against Flowers when he was going into the end zone, that poking the ball out. Unbelievable. Huh? That, that play, that's championship-style defense. That's, champion, that's how teams win. We could talk about Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid, how great how they are. Chris Jones? Chris Dude, one Jones, of the most that, underrated that, players that, in the league, man. That was my next thing. The reason why he lost against the Lions starting the season now, yes, uh, uh, Kelsey was hurt. I think because Chris Jones' presence wasn't on the field. And so when you, when you look at it like that, man, that mentality that they're not – they're always going to get overshadowed because you got a, Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. But that defense and, and Tranquil, the, how, they're, how they're playing right now, is the reason why they're in a Super Bowl. I'm going with KC to win the game because, you know what, they already beat two, two teams that were better than them, and they know how to win. They're going to capitalize off your mistakes. And teams that have been here so, so many times, they know how to win. Let me ask you, Tushar, what's it like as a defensive player – when you get a quarterback in third and long, like Buffalo and Baltimore did all the time, and you know he's throwing it to Travis Kelsey, and you can't stop it. He 11 for 11. He was targeted 11 times. He caught 11 balls. How frustrating does it get in the huddle and when you're on the line when you're playing a team like I, that? I never understand this. Going into a game, you know which player can hurt you the most. I'm, I'm singling this player out. I don't care who else scores. Yeah, I don't care who, who catches the ball, get a first down. So if you need to triple team his ass, right? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Somebody else is going to beat us today, but it won't be him. about last season, last year's game, it ends on the failed Hail Mary, and both teams run out onto the field. That's what you're looking for, is a game. A chaotic end, end of the game. You can't get the game. Oh, great long. point. But, yeah. Two points spread in the game. Think it could come down to the wire. Everyone says script, Taylor slip, all this stuff. So I like uh, 1,600, no Gatorade point. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back-to-back at least point one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on them. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left, the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. They have played terrible football, and yet they always win. Have you noticed? They Everyone keeps talking about how bad the Niners suck as they win every week. They win every game, even games they should have. They're down 24-7, and they still won. Now we have the first excuse when the Niners lose on Sunday night. They practiced on a bad field at UNLV. They didn't get the proper conditions. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. If he doesn't run well, the Chiefs are really in trouble. Mm -hmm. If McCaffrey doesn't run well, there's a lot more options that you can actually use at that point. That's how I'm trying to approach it and effectively. But also, Pacheco, anytime touchdown, if they're going to score a touchdown, probably going to be him. That's a good look. Attempts from Pacheco. If you believe Kansas City is going to play their style. If you don't, then maybe you go under that total in regards to that. Pro football today. Only on SportsGrid.
But I'm always, I'm always surprised when, when that happens. Travis Kelsey going to get his catches. Ain't, there's nothing you can do about it. He's going to get his targets. He's going to get his catches. He shouldn't go 10 for 10 or 11 for 11, ever. That's just too much. Sean, it's always a pleasure, man. Appreciate I know you've it, been brother. doing the rounds. Thank I always you. love seeing you. you. I got to get out to a Lights Out card uh, one of these times. We're always on the air, but we're going to do this. Uh, check it out. Next Friday night, it's on uh, Fubo. And if you're in the area in Southern California, Long Beach, California is the place to be. It's always a pleasure, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate Good it. stuff. All right, welcome back in Pro Football Today here, the big game edition on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri alongside my car, and uh, Mike, I, I could not help myself. Uh, just there in that last segment, I fired away three more bets here. And the more and more I get closer to kickoff, the more and more I think there is. The only way Kansas City is going to win this game is if they're playing from in front. So I'm about to make that first half bet on Kansas City. I don't think they're built to come back this season here, Mike. Uh, I don't think they're built to come back either. And I think the way for the Niners to get this done, Joe, is like that. I think the Niners got to build themselves uh, a nice lead in this game. I think that that's their key to success. Get out to the 10, 14 point lead in the first half. Make Mahomes have to try to throw the ball around a little bit, uh, which has been a struggle for them. They want to control the game. I like the first half play that you're talking about there. If you were on that side, seems like everybody so far, Joe on the Kansas mm. City side uh, right now. A lot of the charts and graphs crowd uh, is leaning that way uh, to them. Uh, let's go back out to Vegas, though, Joe. What do you say? And, of course, Scott Farrell always having a good time out in the Mecca, the hub, Sin City, talking to everybody out at Media Row. Here's Scotty. Jay Glazer's here from Fox Sports, my dear friend. Uh, here's the deal. So what happens is I do, we have a we have shows called In Game Live. So right. like in game betting. Right. So when I do Saturdays, I do a hundred college football games live, and I do a hundred college basketball games or whatever live. Damn. And then I did the Rose Bowl live. Damn. The whole the whole game. And then we're doing the Super Bowl. So we'll be on from 6:30 till end game. So you turn off their sound and you guys do it. That's right. And so right. we we react to the game. Right. We we talk about the game not non-stop for the entire game right. it's like doing one of these alternate broadcasts that you guys do or espn or fox does where they have this side piece going of action but the difference is is that ours is completely dedicated to gambling right everything's right. all about the odds right. the number the spread the total everything changing in-game betting mm -hmm. and it's the most unbelievable thing oh. i've ever seen like you know all right so being on fox the enormity of it right yeah, yeah. so when i started at sports grid they had no one right and now it's in you know 200 million homes right, 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 right. now it's on every streaming service yeah. in the world I know now, the it's the, it, yeah. now it's the number one streaming sports channel in the world wow. fast channel for because of gambling right. sports betting has become so enormous that this channel sports grid that i came to from cbs i chose to do this it's like crack for these people. Right, yeah, yeah. And it like doubles, it doubles all the sports yeah. betting apps. That's what happened originally when fantasy football became huge. That you changed know. my life, yeah. And now this also, when we do our ins and outs on Fox NFL Sunday, I know how much, you know, juice we have in there. There's one game I said, it was last year, two years ago, I forget what it was, last year, that there was a quarterback that was questionable, and I said, not only is he not questionable, he's out today and the next three weeks, he was that game was pulled off the board. <laughs> Man, that, listen, that bling is so strong. Is that Jesus? That's Jesus, baby. Honestly, King, bro. King Jesus. I mean, my man. Oh, my God. Amazon. He, uh, Carver I, Amazon. Carver I, he's got Jesus on his bling. I mean, it is, I, I mean, this guy, he just set the bar on another level. Look at him. He's got Jesus on. Bro, that is tight. So, four years ago, you are in the Super Bowl uh -huh. with the Niners. Was that a trip? Trip, bro. It's crazy to be back out here, but it was a trip, man. A crazy experience. 
glorified game. So I used to go to games in Foxborough, mm -hmm. and I believe like that it's possessed. <laughs> Their fans are possessed by the devil, <laughs> and that's why you wear that Jesus chain Amen. because the fans in Foxborough want to kill me because I'm a Steeler fan, and the fans in Foxborough are drunk, and they're the devil's children, and then I they took me to a casino there, Foxwoods, and I was held captive for weeks. Oh, my goodness, bro. Bad experience. They're great fans up there, though. Do they you like are. it? They are. I do. I do. I can, I can handle it, bro. Were you stressing? out that you guys weren't winning did it stress you I, out i was stressed out i missed i missed the dynasty era man i came too late you came too late <laughs> what did you think when it was the end for bill that sucks like man he's the yeah, man it's crazy man it's crazy i hopefully any any ventures he goes into he, be successful he's one of the coolest guys ever uh off camera off the football field telling stories football mm -hmm. stories no one tells better football stories than bill belichick yeah so hopefully he gets in the media space so we can hear more was he stories, ever man. cool to you guys away from the field and yeah. like just a cool dude yeah. Yes, for sure. For me personally, as my, my, my relationship with him, it was great, man. Funny guy. Cared about his guy. Keep killing it, bro. Thank I you, love bro. you. Appreciate Bill Miller, the CEO of the American Gaming Association, is back on coast to coast for the second year in a row. Is that right? Indeed. So it's good to see you, Bill. And uh, can you give me an update on the $23 billion that Americans will uh, bet on Sunday's game, which really is a demented number think about how gigantic that pill is to swallow 23 billion dollars bet on one football game well it is it's incredible first of all it is great to see you again my um, man my man and yeah like just just where we've come right i mean we're here in nevada and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes but this was the only place where you could legally bet on sports right right for a long long time decades that was it and so Supreme Court rules, uh, Chris Christie, you know, God love him, takes it up and says, why shouldn't New Jersey have the same opportunity as Nevada? And oh, by the way, you're right. He the was the reason. He was the reason. The reigning world champ is here, Cam Hayward of the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I don't know about reigning. <laughs> reigning world champ, defending world champ, unbeaten world champ, the king. <laughs> and uh, man, it's so great to have you on the show. As you know, in less than two minutes, I told you my life story about Pittsburgh. Right. Does that give me? I that gives me like I'm in the fraternity. Oh, I'm yeah. here. You we got go. The cred. You got here the we cred. go. Yes. Sir. I'm a season ticket holder. I went to all six Steelers Super Bowls. Yes. Um. I even said to you that I thought the Bills game was fixed by the refs with the crappy call on Jack. Your bingo card is, is and, there. And now this one I haven't said to you. I even knew that you said you were going to keep playing because you don't like playing on one leg. <laughs> it's yeah, true. Very true. For And Warren Sharp's here. Am I not looking straight ahead at that green light and that we're on looking straight ahead on the monitor? Am I wrong? Yeah, well, all the cameras have a green light. The red light, there's only a couple that have red lights at different times. Well, that one has a red light. That one has a red light. And the guy that runs the green light just gave me the finger. He just gave me the finger, that guy. Now, how about, honestly, Warren, that kick-ass, I don't even know what it is, shirt you're wearing. It, I think it almost has a back to it like it's a sport coat. I can't figure out what it is. But it is Gandhi. I like it. I appreciate it. You're that. always breaking you know the trends and the you, you got the style you right, stand so, uh we got a lot going on here what is your impression this week of uh and by the way sports bylines with us as well all their great affiliates thank you for uh tuning in uh we're at the super bowl 58 uh radio row at the mandalay bay where the fishes fly in las vegas warren Sh uh, sharp our lead analyst and the mad scientist himself live and in living color sitting next to pharrell he's always in uh you know the belt way he's always at his uh fat crib or at the uh you know the mgm national i mean you're always you're always somewhere but now you're finally with me at the super bowl how about that and what's your impressions this week as opposed to where you were on this game last week with me well i think the biggest thing for me is when i saw the way that that ravens lost that game by not running the football i immediately wanted to be on the san francisco 49ers like the first thing i was thinking is the niners should be able to kill these guys on the ground i don't know i don't know why the ravens did not take advantage of that against the chiefs run defense but the niners should be able to i love kyle shanahan they have better players because they're paying brock purdy peanuts against the salary cap he's quarterback 67 Christian McCaffrey is on a reduced deal because they uh, added void years 
years at the end of his contract, so he's only $3 million. He's like running back 18. They got a better roster, a deeper roster. The 49ers should have the advantage here. And I thought I knew a lot about these teams. I didn't think I was going to be surprised when I went to break these game, these teams down in detailed analysis for this game. Um, and I looked at the other side, and everybody who was on the Chiefs, they're not doing detailed analysis. They're just betting it because of Patrick Mahomes, more or less. Most of these guys right. are betting it because of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is a dog, obvious play. I, I went through this report, okay? I did. I, I wrote up 67 pages, nearly 70 pages, spent nearly 70 hours on it as well. And no lie, I think the people that think that the 49ers are going to win this game for the same reasons I thought and for the same reasons I just mentioned, I think they're wrong. I think they're wrong if they think that that is the path to victory for the San Francisco 49ers. It's lazy. I don't think if anybody actually dug deep into this analysis for any point in time, they could feel better about the 49ers than they did when they started their research, simply because I think that there are many more edges and margins within the edges that favor the Kansas City Chiefs, in my opinion, on both sides of the football. The one thing, though, that stood out to me, and we're going to walk through this game, you know, over the next hour, we're going to talk about the Niners on offense and the Niners passing the ball, Niners running the ball, flip it to the Chiefs. But the one thing that I guess bothers me a little bit about siding with the Chiefs right. that I uncovered was simply the fact that I think that the 49ers are much more capable of erasing a deficit and coming back in this game if they need to, whereas I'm not so sure that the Chiefs are capable of that. The Niners have the number one most explosive passing offense in the NFL. They start quick. They can end the game quick as well with their passing attack. They've come back. They erased a 17-point right. deficit last week, seven points the week before that. The 49ers are capable of doing that because of their explosiveness and their explosive playmakers on offense. The Chiefs don't have that. You know, in 2019, the Chiefs, they go and erase three deficits of double digits right. in route to their first Super Bowl. The Chiefs, in, even last year, they went 4-1 and one when trailing during the regular season by double digits. They won five, four of those five games. This year, they are two wins and four losses when down by anything more than seven points. Right. And the only wins have come against backup quarterbacks Jake Browning and Aiden O'Connell. They, they are one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL, pass offenses, the Chiefs, when trying to pass the football 10-plus yards down the field in the second half of games. They just don't have that element to get back into the game. That alone is the factor that has me feeling a little bit nervous about the Chiefs, but everything else, as we'll get to, uh, there, there's a lot more that are fall, is falling into the pro-Chiefs basket for me than the pro-Niners basket, and it was a little bit surprising to me, but um, that's what the research shows. All right, Sean Alexander with us. Uh, the cafe momentum is off to my left here at the Super Bowl. It's really cool. Create change for youth justice. I think it's really... Uh, awesome, badass what you're doing for kids. You yeah. started out in one city. Now you're expanding all That's over right. the country. Your plan is to eventually get it every NFL city. Yeah, you know, because, uh, you know, like we're saying, the recidivism is at 11%. So that means if we actually put uh, put a cafe momentum in your city, there's a great chance that the kids that do things, even things that probably should have some punishment. Stupid. Too. Yeah, yeah, but who really wants to be judged for the rest of their life for something they did it? For a mistake. 15, 16, or 17. Like, even if it was done on purpose, you're like, man, we can't throw these kids So away. they used to ruin kids' lives, yeah. and now you're trying to change that, which is what's, you know, really specific about it. It's cool. It's All right, form. you made a mistake. We're going to give you another chance to get your act together and get your life straight, we're going to help you, yep. and you either take that help or you... Uh, or you, or you are you know, a moron. And we found out that majority of the kids turn it around and all over the country say, yes, I want to take the second chance. What, what does it mean to you to have the freshman of the year Maxwell Award named after you and then to see the kid downs at Bama get it? Yeah, you know, it's been so sweet. Like, so it's been named to me for six years now. So Trevor Lawrence was the first one. And then you. Forty-seven is one of the hardest numbers to beat, period, for yeah. an NFL football game. 
a lot of combinations that can fall 47. You decide. Of course. You're getting great two-way action. That's what you want as the book. You don't have to move the number. Right. Biggest game of the year is the easiest game to book in the world. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. You a hat guy? Oh, I've got hats. I've got a jillion hats. I hear no. I don't have as many hats as you, but I, I don't. Have you don't. I have a hat bag. He has a hat bag. I have a hat bag. I carry, I carry that, this. That's around. not a purse I mean, or man bag. This it's is a hat ridiculous. bag. This is it. Look, I, I love got, it. I got to go everywhere. And by the way, the whole the whole Randy Moss receiver versus Randy Moss TV guy, the mistaken identity, and all that. How can you confuse us, right? <laughs> He's got hair. He's got hair, and I don't. <laughs> the Bostonian versus the book. I saw a study that said 24% of Taylor Swift fans actually do follow the Chiefs now. Sure. And when you consider how many fans she has, it's quite a lot, 24%. Right? Oh, yeah. You've seen Travis Kelsey's Instagram, yeah. his social media, yeah. everything. Right. It's huge. Oh, no, listen. He's Like his agent said, he's going to be the next rock. Like, he, they're setting him up to be, you know, the next superstar. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Kenny Gainswell, Will Anderson, uh, Brock Bowers, who I just saw earlier, um, and then uh, Drake May, and now Caleb Downs. It's been really sweet. Like, you know, it's really cool. You know, I try to say it without blushing too much. If you're the best player in college football, you win the Heisman. If you're the best freshman, you win the Alexander. Welcome back in as we look to close out this edition of Pro Football Today, the big game edition. And uh, there's no better way to end it uh, than with food, as far as I'm concerned, than our social media team here at the Sports Grid Network uh, got a stadium food tour yesterday. Mike, are you seeing this? I mean, uh, this is... I'm starving right now, and these guys uh, are getting the carte blanche tour of every food known to mankind at this game. You got to start thinking about the menu as well, because mm. it's a big day from that aspect. And I think, look, wings are obviously a staple. You got to have some wings in the mix. I'm going to try, Joe, uh, over the weekend to talk my wife into making uh, the buffalo chicken dip that she makes. That's a must yes. have uh, for me on Sunday night when this game kicks off. Yeah, no, you, you have to have it. I mean, it's uh, I, I believe the last week, too, uh, our good friend Craig Mish here on the network host of Newswire, uh, had the unmitigated gall to come out and say that, oh, it's trays of chicken parm. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Ooh. Like, it, no, Ooh. you are not Ooh. busting out the chicken parm during no. the football. No. no. I mean, not. it is Sunday sauce day. I get it. But th there's levels to this. On, on football Sunday, I want nothing to do with the chicken parm and the pasta. Like, no. that's just a little too heavy for me, man. Uh, no, that's a no-no go for me. This is not Italy in the World Cup final. Uh, this is Correct. Super Bowl Sunday. We need to go wings. We need to go dip. We need to go nachos. We need to go with all yes. of those things. Little helmet nachos, Joe. Go get the helmet off the wall. Stuff the nachos in there. About. That's what we're talking about, Joe. Big time. That's it's right. a big game. 
There you go. That's the big game, but not that I'm opposed to a good Brajol every now and then, but that's not <laughs> what we're doing here. All right, guys, we appreciate it. Joe Ranieri, Mike Carver, we'll be back again. Pro Football Today, the big game edition. Enjoy the rest of your day.